It's your girl, Ro, in the building, and today, you're live with Ro. Today, I'm going to share with you the best way to melt your chocolate candy melts. So, as we wait for people to notice that I am live, we're going to go into the kitchen and get started. Hello, everybody, and hello to everyone that is going to be re-watching this video. So let's see this notification come out. Can y'all see me? Hey. Hey, hey. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My mic is low. What about now? Hey, from Barbados. Is my mic low? Can y'all hear me okay? You can hear? Okay, well, I said they can hear. Let me add this mic. Somebody, everybody said the sound is good. All right, I hate to add a device and then it just stopped working. Special K, yes, she said we good. So I ain't finna put this mic on. All right. So whoever said the sound is low, you might want to turn it up. Hey, lady. Sounds perfect. All right, let's get into it. All right. Let's go to the studio. All right, this is where we're going to be working at. Um... Let me know if the picture is good. Okay. Oh, excuse me. We good. We good, right? Let me let me change my. Uh oh. Let me change my direction here. I had this set all up how I wanted it, but now I gotta change it. So sorry, y'all bear with me. Y'all with me? All right. Sorry about all that movement. But let's get into it. All right, so we good. <sighs> okay, so the way I have everything set up, I can't see no comments right now, so. I want you all to know what you're viewing, okay? Finally caught you live. 
All right. So, Keely, if you're going to be here for a minute, please, please, please moderate. So, we're going to get into it. Let's talk about melting chocolate. I got a lot of comments. So, I said, let me show you in live time how I get my chocolate to be so flowing and smooth. All right. So, I do use Merkins. I do use 1101 by the Stover's company brand and um, the Stover's Ultimate White. But whatever I can get my hands on, I, I use it, except for Wilton's. So, um, someone asked me in the comments, could I give measurements and details on how I melt my chocolate? And I explained to them, if you check out some of my other videos, I give detailed information. Just this last video, I didn't. So I figured, you know, you guys can watch my other videos. But that's why I be so detailed in my videos because it's always somebody new that comes in and want to learn. All right? So... Y'all going to watch this live. Make sure y'all share this video. Share it on your Facebook page. Share it out. So this algorithm will know that I'm back. Okay? Give this video a thumbs up. All that good stuff. All right? I ain't been live in a minute. So I use a Paris glass or anchor glass to melt my chocolate. Sometimes if it's in a bowl, it's because I didn't transfer it into um, a bowl like this. And then I have to remelt it and um, it'll be in a bowl. But it's quicker to do it when it's a glass bowl. But there's a system to doing it. All right. So I use a two cup measure. Okay. Which is 16 ounces. And I fill it up with merkins, with the milk, okay? Some people mix merkins and almond bark together. I use straight merkins. It's also best to have fresh, if it's fresh. I can even work with it if I've had it for a long time. Um, it's just that um, I add Paramount crystals to them. So I fill it up so that it can be um, two cups. When it melts down, it's not going to be a total um, of two cups. So before I melt, I add in two tablespoons of Paramount crystals. Paramount crystals is just a fully hydrated palm kernel oil with soy. Okay? That means it melts and become an oil, but it will set after it has cooled down and come down to temperature. So that's what I like. If, if it's oil, like vegetable oil, your chocolate or candy milks will continue to be oily. And if you add just regular oil, it will take your chocolate, whatever dessert you dip in, it's going to take, it's going to take that chocolate to, um, solidify a very long time. So if you ever melt chocolate and you added vegetable oil and it still had dried and you had to put it in the refrigerator, well, that's why, because just like shortening, when shortening, um, melts, it it turns into an oil. But once it cools down and comes down to temperature, it goes back to a white substance. Okay? That's, uh, that's different than the vegetable oil. Vegetable oil stays as an oil. So you don't want your stuff to stay oily. You want it to set. So that's why I always use Paramount Crystals and I'm adding two tablespoons to a two ounce cup of candy melts. So first thing I'm going to do is melt for 30 seconds in the microwave on hot. Now 
Now, just to let y'all know, this is a live video. It's going to take some time and a process for this to get done. Okay, so if you're joining and you want a popcorn tutorial, this ain't it. I'm showing you in live time how I melt my chocolate candy melts. All right? All right. Everybody following me so far? Okay, so after the first 30 seconds, it's not going to melt. But what you want to do is, excuse me, I'm going to get my other spoon here. Hold on one second. I'm going to switch out back a little. Switching out spatulas because all right. So after the first 30 seconds, you want to mix it up. The cup is heating up, but you want to mix it up. Mix it up after every interval. This is what I do. Some people may say, Oh, that's just too much time. Well, you know. You're trying to perfect something is going to take time. So this is the process that I do. After that, put it back in for another 30 seconds. So after this 30 second interval, you're just going to repeat the same step. Melt, mix, melt, mix. But after the second 30, 30 second interval, you are going to go according to your melts, um, depending on which ones you use. But because I'm using Merkins, it's going to take a little bit more time to melt it. Now, mind you, the cup is heating up. It's warm on the outside. So again, we don't have a complete we don't have, the, have it melted completely. So again, mix that around. So what I'm doing is utilizing the heat from the side of the cup. Okay? So I do this for about a minute just to give it a good mix and then put it back in a microwave for 15 seconds, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you, when you do this, you have to be mindful because some people get into the habit of, oh, it ain't melted all the way, but you throw it back in there. No, you should mix in between intervals, which will help the process of melting. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it's warm on the outside because every time you put it back in, you're heating it up more and more, right? So the temperature is going, hot, um, going up. So I'm going to mix. You see how much melts is in here, right? So... With me mixing, that heat that's on the, from the side of your cup is helping melting down, melt down majority of those melts, okay? That was still left in here. And this is how I melt my candy melts every time. Every time, right? So I'm utilizing the heat so that I don't overheat or burn out my candy melt. And I do this with every other brand. Okay? You see that change? See that difference? If you see a difference, comment down below. Difference, I see it. I see it. Just comment down below. I see it. Mm-hmm. 
A lot of y'all will be like, oh, that's too much work. I just throw it back in there and melt it again. No, I'm telling you, it 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 helps with the ashiness of the chocolate. Also, the ashiness, if you get like those streaks and or your chocolate look ashy, maybe you dip too soon. Okay? But proper melting helps. Okay, look at that. I done got majority. I done got majority of those melts melted, right? So what I'm going to do now, since I did that, I got a few in there that's stubborn. I'm going to throw it back in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, that was 10 seconds. Now look. Easy, easy peasy. Boom. Now, before you dip, before you dip, you wanna let this, if you don't have like a thermometer to, to, to um, see how hot it is, but, um, so it can cool down, but make sure sometimes you'll have some, some of those Paramount Crystal current, uh, uh, melts chips in there. Just make sure everything is, is melted down. Now, like I said, when it melts down, it melts down to about a cup and a half, one and a half cup. I'm sorry. Yeah. One and a half cup of melts. Now, let me show you this trick. Because you want a full bowl, you add more milk. Do you add more Paramount crystals? No. And it depends if you if it's larger. You know what I'm saying? But what I do is add more. Mix it up. Then I'm going to put it back in the microwave for 15 seconds. Okay? So now I'm going to go back in for 15 seconds. All right. Now I'm going to just keep mixing. Mix because this is heated up and you already had melted chocolate. Am I worried about it burning? No, because adding those melts brought down the tip brought down the temperature some, but the key is to keep mixing until you can get majority of those melts melted and go in small intervals when you're reheating your um, chocolate melts. Okay? So I'm gonna go back in for another 15. Y'all still with me? All right. All 
All right. So now we're going to mix. And we're going to utilize the heat because we done heated this up so many times. But it's been heated up in small intervals. Okay. More chocolate has been added. And I'm going to keep mixing until I get majority of those melts that I added to be melted down. This is this is my process, my technique every time. And what's helping melt down those melts is the um, chocolate that I already had melted and the heat from the glass cup. And I've been melting in a Pyrex cup for years. <laughs> for years. Now, you see that, right? I may see a little bit. I, I think I see about a couple of melts. Candy melts that's still in there. Like that one. When you see that, try to make it. Now, you don't want to put it in there and, and, and risk burning your chocolate. But if it's just not going to melt, then put it in there for 10 seconds. Because you want the whole thing smooth. But what I try to do is push it up against the um, glass container. To make sure I melt it. Because, boom. Okay. Now, is this ready to dip? Are you ready to dip? your strawberries or whatever else in here? No. Let it sit to come down to temperature. Okay? And I always say about five minutes. Like three to five minutes, the max. Okay? Um, I do have some strawberries out, but while that's sitting out, I'm going to show you the process. So what y'all do? Give it up for me. Come on. Melted chocolate. Melted cut chocolate melts. Okay. You're seeing it for yourself. Live and in color. And all I added was. Two tablespoons of Paramount Crystals added to a two to a 16 ounce cup. And I added more chocolate milks to give me a full cup. Okay. Give it up for your girl. All right. So now y'all see how I melt my chocolate, how I get it so smooth. Also, using um, the chocolate chameleon. Um, which this is for chocolate. All right. Um, it will also help thin out, um, your chocolate. Um, and there's, uh, the Chef Masters candy color that you use for chocolate is candy color. All right. It has to say Chef Masters candy color, but, um, chocolate chameleon is one of my favorites. I've been using this for years, for years. I remember when it first came out, I was promoting this so heavenly because it was like magic for the
okay? Pick through them, okay? If they soft, don't use them because they will go bad quick. If, like, they got, you know, soft spots. Like this, y'all don't... Look at that, look at that, look at that. Do you see that? Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Y'all see that bug moving? Look. Mm-hmm. If y'all don't see it, I see it. Look at that. That's why you got to clean them and don't be eating them in the stove. Oh. Anyway, I was just getting ready to say it'd be ants and all type of bugs. You may find dead or not living up under here. Okay. And that's why I use this. I use veggie wash. I put y'all up on this years ago. Get off of Amazon. I think so many people bought off of Amazon. The price had went up. Okay. But it removes wax um, from the food. It don't remove. You would you still like don't go spray this on apples thinking you're going to just strip the wax. It still follow the process because I know somebody's going to ask me that. But. Um, it gets rid of the, um, pesticides, soil, you can soak your vegetables, but one thing don't do, don't soak your strawberries overnight. Okay. And if you don't want to use this, you can use, um, baking soda and vinegar. All right. So like I said, what I do is. Check all my berries, get them dead leaves off of there. Sometimes they come off um, in the water. Check those. But some people get strawberries and go straight to dipping. I, ooh. It happens. If your strawberries look like this, look at that. That's too soft. But people will use these. This is not good to dip. Do not use these. Okay? You can clean them and make some puree, but don't, don't use them for, for dipping in your chocolate. These soft spots will leak. Look at that. It will leak through the chocolate. Okay. Look at that. That's why you have to get, um, you know, several packs of strawberries. I don't know if that's from another strawberry. And it is this one here. People will clean it and still use these. Do not. Don't do your people like that. Don't do them like that. All right. And I'm cleaning these because I'm going to put them up. Because I had them out. So another thing about strawberries, if you leave them out too long, um, because I get questions about um, how long, how you keep the, the leaves fresh, clean them, store them, and use them right away. That's how you keep them, you know, have good, good fresh. If you got them cleaned and they sitting out for a long period of time, then your leaf is starting to die. The oxygen is just is is starting to go away from from the uh, from the leaves. They start to dry and shrivel up. Okay. Got to look up under those strawberries. Be out here getting folks sick, y'all. It's important. Ooh. 
Is that another ant? It sure is. Yes. You gotta remember, the if you got if they coming from a berry patch, what you think is rolling around in the dirt? <laughs> Pesticides. It's, it's all out there. You just gotta clean them properly. But this is what I use. It works efficiently. But you can find this on Amazon. It's one of my favorite products to use for strawberries. They don't need to soak. <coughs> Excuse me. Or anything like that. Mm. I just spray. But I'm a Add a little extra. Put some in there. Now I run like luke lukewarm water. It don't it don't be too hot like luke lukewarm. Okay, and I start rinsing off my strawberries. I don't let it soak. Or anything like that I just wash them really really good okay and I'm gonna show you what it looks like after that's done Y'all see that? So I give it a little bath and then I'm gonna dry. The longer that these stay in water, the longer the, the leaf will start, you know, you don't want, like I said, you don't wanna soak your berries overnight, anything like that. Just go ahead and clean them and dry them, okay? Get out my strainer. And all I do is put my strainer over into the sink and then pour. But I wanted you to see, see the water. And I do this like a couple of times. I don't spray them anymore, but I, you know, keep rinsing them. Can y'all see that water? Look at that. And folks be dipping straight out the package. Just straight out the package. Folks be dipping. I don't see how some of y'all do it. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see. Okay. Now I'm going So after I do this process, uh -oh, where am I 
that's how it go. Rain, I, I'm missing my dry towel. So, I take my strawberries. I use a lot of paper towel with strawberries. You want to make sure your your leaf is dried completely, okay? Make sure that leaf is dried. And even the strawberries look better, don't they? Hmm? But this is how I clean my strawberries. Can you see the difference? And I usually lay, you know, have them um, spread it out on paper towel to soak up some of that water from the leaf and the strawberry. And I always check after, check up under there after. Some good ones to dip. So I'm gonna dry a few. To dip, cause I'm gonna do like a, um, three colors, three shades. And I'm gonna use purple, purple or pink y'all. Y'all choose in the comment section. You want to see purple or pink? I know y'all probably like, we didn't see enough pink. How long have I been on here? Okay. Comment in the, comment below. Comment in the comment section, purple or pink. Majority rule. Somebody said both. Well, I'm going to use one color to create three different shades. Purple. Purple. Pink, pink. And thank y'all for joining. Y'all miss me? Pink, purple, purple. Make sure y'all like this video. Thumbs up, y'all. Just trying to. Okay, so go with that. Okay, so we are good to go. Now, like when it starts, I'm glad this happened. So like when you see the rip, like the edges right here, start to form that means the chocolate is starting to thicken up and when it does that like if it does it a lot because you want smooth chocolate just throw it back in the microwave for about 10 seconds okay so let's get to some colors here we got purple Purple for the win. Purple for the win. So we're gonna do purple. This is the purple by Artisan Accent. Make sure you shake it up. Let's 
so this is how I'm gonna get three shades using one color. I'm gonna add one drop. And it's gonna be light. See that? That came from the side. So I'm just going to throw this back in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Let me see. I think we're good. So what I'm doing is scraping the sides make sure I'm collecting all of the white. So, yeah, I'm gonna So we're gonna go with this shade. I'm gonna go ahead and dip in this. Boom, boom. I always use two sticks so I can Make sure I got a good grip, okay? Now, I should be doing these. Now, here's the, the thing to keep them from leaking. You want to cover the whole strawberry and not scrape the bottom. It's not straight, scrape the your back of the strawberry. I'm going to scrape because I want I was doing this. I was saving these strawberries for another design. But that's a super light, like a light, light, light purple, violet. I'm gonna go ahead and dip these. How many y'all? position y'all strawberries on how they're going to lay. I do. Like this will be considered my front. Nice and smooth. Got two more to go for this one. And then we're gonna darken up the color. Comment down below if you're enjoying this video. I'll be done shortly. Sorry, my hand is in the way. Now, sometimes if I can see like that strawberry skin, y'all know what that look like, that strawberry skin. Um, I just dip some more, dip it again. Because I don't like strawberries that has that strawberry skin look. I do a fully covered strawberry. So... Like if that dries, I'ma just re-dip it again. So like it's drying now. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh shoot. You see that? So all I'm gonna do is re-dip.
in there. You don't see. Oh, you don't see it no more. Okay, last one for this color. Then I'm going to throw it back in the microwave for 10 seconds. And the bigger the strawberries, the more chocolate you're going to, to use. Use that strawberry skin. Okay. When it has a little puddle, just remove it. And we're good to go. I'm going to put this back in the microwave. If you can see, it's starting to thicken up. So you don't want to dip when it does that. So put it back in for 10 seconds. Go ahead and put the sticks in these. And then we're gonna create the other color. Thank y'all for joining me again. And we are, uh-uh, I'm gonna turn it that way. All right. Rip that side. You don't want no clumps in there. But like I said, a lot of people, they see clumps. Oh, I'm going to just throw it back in there and think just because... You can just heat it up and melt it. You're actually overheating your chocolate at that point. And then you start to get that elephant skin. So it's just a process of mixing in between each interval. That's the key. Okay? Because I know everybody don't have a thermometer to heat up their chocolate. I mean, if you have it, that's fine. So now I'm going to add... Some more to darken it up. Ryan. Ryan. Okay. Trying to 
see if I should go another shade. Just a little bit. Even though I like this shade. And now we're going to dip. Okay. See what I mean about the elephant skin? Mm-hmm. Loving that shade. These are gonna be pretty, especially when I add a drizzle. Now remember, I, and this is a habit for all of us, cause I do it all the time, just to hurt the cool, you know, the quick to get the process going a little faster. Um, scraping the bottom of your strawberries. Everybody want to know where did the leakage come from? The leakage come from scraping the bottom of your strawberry. That means it's open and it's gonna leak through. So if it's not fully covered then you're going to have leakage. So that's where the leakage comes from. Remember that. That is where the leakage comes from. You want to get rid of that strawberry skin? That strawberry skin look? Just re-dip. And I, 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 I do a redip like when it's just, just solidifying and the chocolate is still soft. So, or, you, you know, you can redip when it's completely dry, but I try to catch it when it's really soft. Okay. These are going to be really pretty. Really pretty. Purple is my favorite color. After that is pink. Okay. Another thing is why um, I add two tablespoons of Paramount Crystals to a two to a sixteen ounce cup. It's because if you add too much Paramount Crystals, you will thin out your chocolate too much and it will taste like oil. <laughs> it will taste like oil and then it will be hard for your um, uh, chocolate to solidify because it's too much oil in there at that time. So I do two tablespoons to a 16 ounce cup. All right. Um, if you're doing... Um, in a 32 ounce cup, you know, you just add accordingly. But trust me, if you add too much Paramount Crystals, it will be too thin. And your 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 strawberries will look like it's you got the see-through chocolate.
Now, with some chuck like stovers, sometimes I don't have to redip because they have a good quality chocolate. Merkins is a good quality chocolate, but you know, they didn't change their recipe or something. I don't know. But um, I'm gonna redip this one and then we're gonna go with a darker color. And that's gonna be it. I'm right-handed, so y'all catching me in an awkward. I don't want to keep putting my arm in the way. So I'm remove. I'm reposit. I'm re placing my strawberries because I don't like the puddles. So if you get a puddle, just move it and put it in another another place. All right. Now, normally, um, this, you don't have to keep heating it up like this. It's cold in here. It's cold in here because it's cold where I'm at, like freezing. I had to have the heat on, up on 90. Nothing wrong with the furnace. Nothing wrong with that. But, but I can tell anytime it's in a cold environment and your chocolate keep um, thickening up, that this is what's going to happen. So, y'all see, I <laughs> got my hoodie on. But yeah, it's been, it was like what, below 18 degrees. I'm putting it back in for 10 seconds. But yeah, I got two thermostats in here. So one is in the front. That one is, was up high and back towards the back of the house. There's another thermostat. It was up high. <laughs> and it was still 66 degrees in here. I'm like, what's really going on? But it's supposed to warm up tomorrow. Thank God. All right. So let's go to the next color. Add a little bit more. And I'm definitely going to add more because that's not even darker. Dark as I want it, rather. Go a little bit darker. too close in color even though it don't but and that will do it that'll do it y'all see how my chocolate's still good still flowing right and I don't overheat it many times Okay, I've been asked, how do you keep reheating the chocolate and nothing happens? This is why you have to have a method to this, a system, a system that works, a technique that works. Okay, so now 
We're going to go with the final color. Final shade. Isn't that pretty? Jesus. And it don't matter what chocolate candy melts I use, I do the same method. Same method. No difference. So I hope this helped. If it, if this has helped you, Give it a try. Let me know. If you got any questions, I'll take them in a few minutes after I get done dipping. See what you guys think. But this is this is this is how this is been doing it this way for a long, long time. Uh oh. And make sure when you re-dip, you go back all the way up to the top. Don't half do it. Have patience. You know, some people don't have patience for this, but always want to criticize about which way they do and they don't have a problem. With, that's fine. And, and and strawberries or the dirt desserts be looking like <laughs> just what it was. You didn't have time. I ain't got time for all of that. I don't understand why people do that or say that when it comes to saying you have a business and you want to learn something and perfect it. But what comes out your mouth is, I ain't got time for that. I understand everybody's trying to find a quick and convenient way, but... Perfection doesn't happen overnight. I'm going to just tell that for the people that left out the back room and went down the street. So if you was in the back, I'm not talking to you because you left and went down the street where I had to find you and tell you perfection don't happen overnight. Now, if you bless and gift it, that that's that that's by that's a gift from God, not man. Ain't got nothing to do with that. But it's always search for the quickest way to do something when you're trying to be successful. Have time. Do your research. Do your homework. Perfect. Get in that kitchen. Get in that lab. Get in that office and continue to perfect what it is that you're trying to, to achieve or do. Now, what I don't got time for is that negative talk. <laughs> I don't. Surround, your, surround yourself with positive people. Positive things will start to, to happen in your life. You got them negative people, them naysayers, what you ain't going to do, or this ain't going to work, and this, that, and the other. You hear that for a long time, you're going to believe it. But when are you going to believe in yourself? That's the first and foremost thing, believe in yourself. Because when ain't nobody else around to root you on, that you expect to root you on, Stop looking for it. So you have to encourage yourself. God sees you. It was in his plan. So go according to that. Stop looking for man to tell you everything that you need to do. Look at all this stuff that's coming out now. 
Hmm. Y'all don't want me to get started? I'm just saying. I ain't just saying. I'm just straight facts. It is what it is. Been there, lived it, done that. People want to see you do good, but they really don't. They just want to talk you to death. And then turn around and go and do the same thing you do, but try to outdo you. But then you get caught up because you're figuring, oh, they done did it before you. But guess what? It may not have been your time. And God got other plans for you. But then in that same process was a lesson to show you who your friends or whoever it is, who they truly are. And they were only there in your life for a season. So you take them seasonal folks and let them be to themselves and continue to push forward on what it is you're trying to do and achieve. If, if somebody tell you they don't think this is best for you, how you know I, what, what's best for me? But anyway, I wanted to share that tidbit with you because I'm almost to the end. I am at the end. Okay? I'm not going to do no drizzle. I'm going to do that after the fact. Um, I'm going to clap it up for myself. We got three colors here. Here. Wait a minute. That's the dark one. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank y'all for joining in. Thank y'all for allowing me to just be an inspiration to you all. Um, there's no big eyes or little U's on my platform. Everybody can be what God intended you to be. So just remember that. Um... Y'all have any questions? I'll take some questions. Um, but even for me in my journey, it's been a battle. I ain't going to tell you. It's been easy. It's been a battle. It's been a battle. It's been stuff that I've been trying to do and do. And when you only have like a select a few that believe in you, do you get discouraged? Of course you do. But it gives that gives me fuel to go harder. And to go harder, no matter how many years it takes. Somebody going to have that one yes. Okay? Somebody going to have that one yes. But you got to believe in yourself. Because the person that's going to come with that one yes, they got to see that fire in you. And that is not all talk. So you have to be productive um, you have to stay encouraged. I know it may get hard, but it's the process. It comes with the territory. Everything that meant to be great ain't going to always come easy. It's never going to come easy. So when you put in your blood, sweat, and tears at what it is that you're trying to do or achieve, understand you are not alone. Somebody had to have a starting point. Everybody has a starting point. Okay? You can't zoom there. It's this just it ain't it ain't happen that way. But when you do take the quicker route, something ends up happening. It's short-lived. So just remember, because I ain't gonna preach y'all to death. <laughs> um just remember, I'm gonna turn this camera to me. I'm sweating now. But I'm just going to take this over here so you can see. I'm going to put it all together. I'm going to put it into 
a little box. Do you have a video for doing the this swirl or scroll design on strawberries? You know what? Let me do one while we live. I don't. I I do. I have an old video. Um. I prefer milk chocolate over white chocolate. Can I marble with a color? Or is milk chocolate too dark to mix with colors? Milk chocolate is too dark to mix with colors unless you're doing like a lighter, a lighter chocolate, a lighter brown chocolate. But yeah. I mean, there is other color. Full coloring, that can be powder color, that can mix with milk chocolate. You can still create colors with milk chocolate. Um, oh, it, it's just certain, you just got to match them up so that they can come out. How much do you charge for strawberries? It just depends on the market. Um, for a dozen strawberries, mine is 55 and up. And that's just a simple drizzle in color. Um, let me get a piping bag. And some parchment paper. talking about the one that looked like a scroll so let me yeah so let me tell you the technique to that so when you put chocolate into the piping bag to have control of that that scroll or that swirl design I like to use a small bag like not a small bag but you want it to be small enough to hold in your hand to where you have control or if you use a Ziploc bag that's fine a little small Ziploc bag um, let me go get my scissors oh right here um The key to that is not to make the hole so big because you want to have some control. So I'm going to cut small so I make sure it's not okay. That's control for me. Like, it's super small. All right? So how I learned how to do the different swirls is practice on paper. I hope y'all can see this. Okay, so I hope my hand is not in the way. <sighs> Look at that. So you squeeze, come around, but you gotta move. You gotta move. Just in a smaller form, okay? In a smaller form. So practice like this on a small on a on parchment paper. Do it at a small scale. Squeeze. Uh oh, I moved that paper. Okay. Please just do it at a smaller scale. You see what I'm doing? Um, a previous question. Is there a deeper purple than the one that you are using or do you have 
or do you have to can continue to add more? This this gets dark. This this get dark. You just gotta continue to add more. All right. Uh, Chambers, if her local cake supply store has them, she will get them from there, but mostly Amazon. Oh, what was the question? Do you need a license to sell chocolates? Do you need a license to sell chocolate strawberries? No, you if you if you sell it as a business, you need to be registered as a business, but to have a license to sell strawberries, no. You need if you selling strawberries and you running a business because anything you sell you are a business so you 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 want to be registered if it's just a side hustle which everybody always say you 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 even your side hustle need to be registered <laughs> where do you get your paramount crystals from from my local supply store and you can get paramount crystals online you can order it off of Amazon. Okay? So the person that was talking about the swirl, and then it's another way. Um, I'm going to mess my design up. Uh, let me dip. I'm going to dip another strawberry and do the other way that I think you guys talking about. But I got a signature design that I do on my strawberries and I love to do some of y'all may know what that is But I'm going to show y'all on this one here. Okay, just give me a few minutes while I dry this other strawberry. As soon as that one dry, I'm going to show you the other one that a lot of people do. And it's like a loop. Uh-oh. It's like a loop. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's like, it's like this. All you're doing is going that way, loop down, loop, 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 loop. Okay. So you start here. Probably don't went too fast. But is that what you're talking about? Now, I would do these if I didn't have a flat bottom. Okay. And I like when the, the small white, white bees are on them. Nine pareils is what they are. I may have added too much, but. Okay, 
So I hope the person that was on here that asked me to do this design is still here. But um, yeah. Want me to do it one more time? Let me dip this strawberry and then that's gonna be it. Okay, hope you all enjoyed this live. Again, thank you for joining with me. What's the best white chocolate brand? The best white chocolate brand is by Stover's, the Ultra White. Why? Because you can melt that and you don't even have to add Paramount crystals to it. And it comes out amazing. Merkins used to be that way because I used to Merkins to death. And then I went to Almond Bark because Merkins was having some, some type of issues with the chocolate. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to teach online, I got to get something that I know is going to come out right. And I ain't got to keep playing with the chocolate, you know. But every time, you know, you come into a struggle, you try to figure out the process that's going to work for you. So, um... I just, just like I said, you just seen me here on this video, even though I'm way over time, but, um, it's the thing you have to practice, but, um, Stover's Ultra White or 1101, 1101 is the one to get, but I mix 1101 and the Ultra White together and it's amazing. Either one of them you can use by by itself, but I like to mix them. I don't got to, and that's just my preference. You don't have to do that because you can use 1101 by itself and it still come out amazing. My next one is Merkins. So, okay. Am I missing questions? I will, I would think the plastic bag melt into it. I don't know what was that question. I must have missed something. Is it okay to microwave your chocolate in a piping bag if the chocolate starts to firm up? Yes, absolutely. Like if this firms up, which it's doing now, I just put it in a microwave. But make sure it's a microwavable bag. And I cut off the extra bag so that I can work with it, which I'm going to have to warm this up now for about... 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, you know, depending on how hard it is. I'm loving my purple. So I'm just warming up the piping bag to do the swirl design again. And then that will be it for this video. Stover Sweet Shoppy, yes. Stover's. If I was to sell chocolate strawberries for Valentine's Day, do I need to report what I make? Molly, I, I'm not sure what you mean by report what you make. As a business, every year you should report what you, you make. And you report that by filing your taxes Re, uh, do, sending in your reports for your LLC if you are LLC, but if you're a sole partner, uh, prior, you don't have to because you fall up under another tax bracket. But when it comes to reporting, it could be a list of things. <laughs> if you are on aid and you need to report that income, then yeah, you you report it. But we a lot of people don't report that <laughs> because they're trying to keep the benefits. But, you know, I'm not here to tell you don't report it. But by law, if you are on assistance, of course, you have to report any extra income that comes into the household, if that's what you're referring to. But as a business, you report every year by doing your taxes or doing your quarterly reports as a business or your reports as an LLC. 
Okay? Your girl knows business. I teach it. <laughs> um, did I answer how to get um, a deep, rich purple? Yes. So what you would do is add more color to get a deep purple. To get a deep, to get a deeper purple, just add more food coloring. And the color is pretty potent, so um, with this particular brand, but yeah. Okay, one more time for the swirl. And again, when you do these swirls, make the smallest hole in your piping bag possible to create these lines, okay? And apply pressure as you are doing your swirls. Don't let off the bag, okay? As you apply pressure, you just swirl. I'm going off the, I'm trying to keep it, which is too, too loose. Did y'all catch that? I gotta clean up anyway. I got stuff follow. Uh, that's it. All right, you guys. I am over my time, but I enjoy sharing with you guys and giving you as much information um, as needed. What brand of best food coloring? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. There is a top three for me, and that I use um, and have used, which is Chocolate Chameleon, number one. Um, Chef Masters Candy Color, Chef Masters Candy Color, and um the berry patch coated in color those are my top three that i would refer to if i can't get something i'll go to chef masters and if chef masters don't ha have it i see if coated in color has it but those are my top three i've been using um Um, and you can use color meal. A lot of people use color meal. I don't. I just don't have nothing against it. Um, it's just that I work with what I like because I know my results. So everybody have a preference, and that's fine. Um, but I've been using uh, chocolate chameleons ever since it came out. So, and I got attached to that, and I know when they had stopped production, and it was hard to find it, um, but, you know, they send me colors anyway, so I'm an ambassador for the company, so, um, but this is coded in color. This is... That's not a candy color. I don't know why that's in there. But this is how you can confuse the two. But this is what candy color looks like. This is for chocolate. Chef Masters candy color. It should say candy color for chocolate. Don't use this for your candy apples. Because it say candy. It's only for chocolate. This is a liquid gel color. You can use this for apples. Don't use it for chocolate. Okay. But they do have, they, I don't even see it no more, so I ain't even going to mention that you can use 
to use your um, gel color. But this is for candy. This is for chocolate. Okay? But that's a Chef Masters. And then the Artisan Accent. I mean, the Chocolate Chameleon. So these are my... These are my top, my top three that I use. I'm almost out of that one. Coated in color is black on. Coated in color is black on. So those are the top three that I use. All right. So I think that is the end of our video. You guys, we've been on here super long. You're going to have to rewatch the video. I hear them came down. It's time for me to settle down, clean up, finish up, take pictures after I eat. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and it's your girl Ro about to go. And I see y'all in the next video. Be sure to like and comment after I get off live, because we want this video to stay up. And tell me what you thought about the video. Thank you.